Good afternoon, grade sixes. So we are going to be discussing today ancient Athens, the road to democracy. Now, a lot of this information is going to be similar to what is on your handout, right? but this is a bit of a visual and an explanation of some of that, because I know how much you guys love to read. And I know for a fact a lot of you may have skimmed over it. All right. So ancient Athens, all right, road to democracy. The first thing we got to remember is that ancient Athens well, is one of many city-states, right? It's one of many city-states. Another one that we often talk about or will talk about is Sparta, right? So when we say road to democracy, we're going to look at different forms of government, but not all city-states were the exact same, right? So what was happening in Athens wasn't also happening in Argos, wasn't also happening in Sparta. Similar stuff was happening, but they had their own unique individual systems of government because they ran themselves, right? That is the definition of a city-state. Uh, before we move on to our definitions, it's important that we kind of talk about timelines, right? And what are timelines? A timeline is a representation of period of time uh, on which important events are marked. And so this is an example of the Marvel timeline, right? So how, if you wanted to watch all of the Marvel movies that are released right now, how would it happen? It's called chronologically, all right? So as time passed. So the very first, so like, not the first one released, but the very first movie that takes place in the Marvel Universe is Captain, uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, right? That kind of starts the series off, okay? And then we, as we move through, right, we get into our first Iron Man, we get into our first Guardians of the Galaxy, and then we, we get into our, get into Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, uh, all that leading up to Infinity War. Right, and then obviously Endgame. Now everything else will be happening after that. If you actually watch the most recent Spider-Man Far From Home, a lot of references are made about Endgame and about the snap, right? But that is all about the timeline that's happened, right? It's a period of time, it marks where the port, uh, important events fall. This one is what we see more often when we talk about like history, right? And this is kind of what we're gonna look at a bit today. So there's obviously a little bit of stuff of prehistory Right? And then once the invention of writing takes place, then we have everything in recorded history. All right? You often will see right, either BCE, right, before Common Era or Common Era, separating, uh, separating two eras. Right? More times than not, you'll see BC and AD. This is before Christ, and this is Latin, but it basically means after the coming of Christ, right? This is in reference to a Christian calendar, but you'll see that more often, right? Than you wouldn't, right? You see it here. Um, AC is very similar, okay? But again, as you can see, it goes through the events of time. It goes from the invention of writing to the Roman Empire to Columbus discovering America. All, and we could continue this all the way to 2020, and the most recent thing would be the COVID uh, pandemic, right? But it falls on our timeline. Uh, in uh, for the governments of ancient Greece, we focus on four, as you have read. Right? Monarchs, oligarchs, tyrants, and democracy. So the monarch, as you can see here, uh, is one person who in inherits the power, ruled by an individual who has inherited his rule. All right? The position is it's hereditary. All right? What that means is that this is the king. Inside this circle for all these images is who has the power. This king has all the power. Right? And, they have, and he tries to have as many kids as possible. And typically the firstborn son, that's why there's a number one right over this guy, right, is the person who will inherit this role. This is not a very common form of government in ancient Greece. Uh, to, uh, it was more about the empires before ancient Greece kind of became established. But the, when there were kings of such, right, they created laws, they acted as judge, they led their armies. Right? And they also have a council of aristocrat, arist aristocrats, not aristocrats, that's a Disney movie, right? Aristocrats. So these people are wealthy landowners. What happens is the king, as they make laws and they try to conquer territories, they'll have armies, right? But armies cost a lot of money. And so when they only have a limited supply of money, the kings would go to the aristocrats and they would either get their, sh their so uh, shoulder, uh, soldiers or they would get their money and they would pay for food and horses and all of this stuff that it takes to conquer territories to make more money. Eventually though, these aristocrats decided that they had more power than the king, right? They were rich. So then eventually, they started to take power away from kingdoms, right? So 
the oligarch are a few people who share the power. They were rich, and they passed laws that made them more uh, that made them richer. As you can see here by our citizen, they weren't well liked. Right? They often had to like the citizens would work really hard, and the and the oligarchs would just pass more laws to put more money in their pocket. Right? In your timeline, next, what happens? What happened, or what could happen, is then one person in a tyranny. Uh, uh, one person would take power by force, right? They would seize power unconstitutionally, right? Which means usually they would use it through violent means, usually often killing the person who was in charge before. They had a lot of roles. They did a lot of things. They, uh, in some areas, they were celebrated in love because they canceled the debts that the, uh, uh, from the oligarchs, right? In other places, they were hated because they were tyrants and they, they could do whatever they want, essentially, right? So. As you can see by our citizens, some of them were popular, and some of them weren't. Okay? They often, so what we have here is this is like a military general. He has all the power, and then inside of it, he also has his army, in which also helps to enforce that. Then the last one, right? The last kind of form of government that we get, and this is where we focus really in, this is what we will be focusing in on, is what happened in ancient Athens around 500 B BC. Right, which is that all the people decided that they could govern themselves. Right, it was a direct democracy. So if you remember from our Kit Kat assignment activity, this means that every citizen voted on every issue. They had a, a forum basically where they would gather and they'd have they could hold up to six thousand people. Right, they could hold up to six thousand people, and just like democracies today, though, even though everyone had an equal voice, some voices were a bit louder than others. Right, people with money people with charisma and respect, they would often sway people to vote on what they wanted. The only issue with this direct democracy is only male citizens could participate. Once you are a male and 18 years old, you can come to this forum and make, you can vote on the laws, but that kind of left a large group of the population on the, a population on the outside, right? And we're gonna explore this more, and this is what we're actually gonna start getting into starting next week, is the role of citizens in this democracy. What's important to note is that the reason why this isn't in a timeline is this didn't always happen, uh, didn't always just go from monarch to oligarch to tyrant to democracy. What happened a lot of times is it might have went from oligarch to oh, from oligarch to tyrant to democracy back to oligarch, right? Because sometimes there'll be flaws, there'll be flaws in, in a democracy, and then these people could take advantage of that and eventually establish a mon uh, oligarch. Sometimes then it went from, uh, from monarch straight to tyrant, right? Usually it's only a mon monarch if they are benevolent, right? That means that they're loved. But sometimes when they, sometimes someone might oppose them and take away their spot. And then from there, people might rebel. So government wasn't always just stuck in one position. But eventually by, like I said, 500 BC, it became very clearly, oh, don't do anything, discard, keep. It became very clearly a democracy. All right? And so that was the road to democracy. It went from having a time where there's kings and, king, uh, kings and queens and they would pass down their right to rule to their sons and daughters, right? Then it went from a select few of wealthy people having a most of the money and making laws to keep the money. It went uh, to tyrants where they would take, uh, take the power by force and eventually the power eventually got to the people. One thing we should know from all these slides, if this in the corner here is our citizens, right, that happy guy, the only time citizens are in this is at the very end. That's the first time they can make decisions for themselves. All right? So that's what we're going to explore. Hopefully this video wasn't too, too long. wasn't too, too bad. Uh, have a good rest of your day. Have a good weekend, guys.